connect. There is a movement to bring in a grant um, for oh, uh, rapid transit here in, in Kerr County. And um, one of the commissioners, one of our, one of our great commissioners, uh, has decided that he's like, I don't know, uh, I don't know anybody who wants to have some kind of rapid transit in our community. I don't know who, I don't know who he was, he was like, very adamant. I don't know who wants that. I haven't had one person, uh, <laughs> have one person ask me uh, that they need this. Hmm. And someone was over there like, uh, yeah, uh, hi, yeah, hi, uh, Kirk Connect uh, has like a waiting list of people. Um, and, you know, doing it with volunteers and doing it with uh, kind of the bare minimum of funding. Um, and so, oh, Albert's leaving already. No. All right. He's, all right, he's 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 already he's, he's out. He's, he's done. Already bailed. <laughs> he's already bailed he doesn't like politics now. Yeah, <laughs> uh, but I thought it was an incredibly tone deaf uh, discussion, considering that this is a commissioner who doesn't really pay attention. So there's a couple of those that don't pay attention, but there was a need uh, that the Alamo area council of governments and Alamo Rapid Transit District uh, or Transit whatever came up with and said, hey, you know, this is a need out here. There are people who need ride-sharing services. And look, let's be honest with you. Yeah. There's a lot of elderly people who should not be driving. I see it all the time. When you're, when you're going like three miles an hour down Sydney Baker, probably shouldn't be in the vehicle. So there's ride-sharing yeah. opp opportunities. And, 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 and Kerr Connect was born out of this idea. And I tell you what, it saves a lot of people a lot of time, money, and their lives. And uh, am, I, am I wrong in all that, team, here? Or what, what, no, we start. little different service but they pick people up at their homes and in different places what they're talking about I think in the future is to try to find a system where there are regular stops yeah. there are regular places to stop and unfortunately how are the seniors going to get to those stops if they don't have any transportation to begin with they've got right. a walker or a wheelchair you know there's a lot of problems that come about so I think that's where they hit a brick wall and trying to find the alternate ways of transportation and they want people to to give their two cents to say hey but we I had read that too the I don't remember what newspaper I read it in or, or where I read it but I read the conversation and I was stunned it was probably yeah. the lead yeah probably was <laughs> we, don't, we don't we don't talk about those other organizations here but uh, yes it was probably the lead and I, I was struck by that. I was like, well, and I made a comment about this. It's like, well, they're not going to ask you for, they're not going to ask you, Commissioner, to tell, put in a tra rapid transit. They probably don't care. They probably don't think that you're the person to ask for. But Kerr Connect, though, has been that stopgap for so many people and is a, it's such a great program. Where are we at? Are you, now, are you still the interim, or are you officially the director now? What is your... Oh, is no. I, I am the volunteer coordinator. Volunteer coordinator. Who's the director? Who's in charge? Whit uh, Madison. Whit Madison, okay. Is our director, All right. yes. Okay. But, and, um, but, but being the volunteer coordinator, though, that's, that's a lot of work. It involves a lot of things. Yeah. There's a lot of admin in that, too. Yeah, right. <laughs> exactly. But, uh, like, for instance, we went from maybe... 70, 75 rides a week last year to now we're doing 85 to 90 per week. Wow. And it, uh, like in July, we did 450 rides. And moving and shaking and changing, um, adding drivers with lots of great incentives right now, but um, all in all, we continue to burst at the seams from one year to the next, and we're right. in our sixth year. And right. so it's, would you not say, Albert? I mean, he's been with us for a couple of years. Yeah, it's an amazing program. He's seen the growth, and he uh, adds his two cents in whenever he can. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm just waiting patiently. I mean, you, Albert, how did you get involved? Yeah, most definitely. Um, it was an opportunity to support our community, guys. You know, I, I love our community. I love being involved and trying to find out where I can. What are you not involved, man? You're involved in everything. Involved. Exactly. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know. True. Let me know, and, and I'll jump in there. Um, 
this was a great way to continue volunteering and helping out our community. When I learned about Kirk Connect and the ministry that it was doing for the, the people that live here in, mm -hmm. in Kirk County, I kind of wanted to find out how I could be a part of it. And I'm speaking to those people at home that are listening right now. If you're looking to be a volunteer in our community, this is going to be a great fit for you. Right. It allows you to make your schedule. And uh, I, I'm employed full time. And it's important for me to be able to give back to the community. Right. And this is something that I can do at a full time job where I can pick my ride for the for the week or t or two rides for the week and I'm st it's still flexible enough for my schedule that I can do it and do it responsibly and that's what I probably as a volunteer what I love most about it uh, is being able to set my schedule now you work in a senior care facility at Juniper uh, yes, sir. Uh, does Kirk Connect serve people that live in there or do you have other means for them yeah, I'm, I'm new to Juniper. I just got there about four months ago. Yeah. And I got to actually meet people from Juniper. To use Kirk Connect, they like that it comes directly to their door. They can call Kirk Connect directly, yeah. say, I have an appointment next week at this time, and a volunteer will see that on our schedule, so and they, we pick it up. They call you, or they make an appointment on the website, you you, you rap on their door, right, come out, and then you drag them out. and pick <laughs> them Drag them out, <laughs> throw them in my vehicle. Yeah. No, um, we, we have a protocol that we follow as volunteers. Once we go onto our website, onto our portal, we look at the, all the rides that are available for next week, yeah. and I look at my schedule, my, right. my work schedule, and I said, I'm going to make an example. Next Tuesday at 10 o'clock works great. I accept it. And that means I'm picking up Mr. Lewis at his house at 1030 on Tuesday. I call you and let you know, hey, I'm Albert. I'll be your volunteer driver next week. And I'll be picking you up. This is my number. And then I will also call you the night before. Right. Just a little courtesy reminder the day before. I'll see you tomorrow. It's also good for me because you might have canceled your appointment and forgot to notify Kirk Connect. Yeah. Um, so I just confirmed that we're still on for the next day, and I'll give you a call about 30 minutes before I come pick you up that nice. morning. And um, what kind of car do you have? I drive that Uplander vehicle van outside. So I've put wheelchairs in there. I've put walkers. Nice. I have taken <laughs> apart a mobile scooter and got it in there. I didn't know yeah. I was picking up a, a rider with a mobile scooter Whoa. one time. Wait, what? Uh, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. wow. I got to hear that he story. He told yeah. me exactly how to break it down. I went to pick him up from the VA, and uh, he told me exactly what to do. I followed it from directions one through five, and we got it in the vehicle and got him to his next stop. You know what I got this year, by the way? Uh, uh, I, I never thought that I would. Well, I've had a minivan previously, but I'm telling you, the minivan is the greatest thing ever. Mm -hmm. I am so happy with it, and I, like, I don't need to be cool anymore. I hear <laughs> some guys my age like getting Camaros and Corvettes. Nope, I got a Honda Audi, Odyssey minivan. Nice. I so, think that's cool, man. Yeah, uh, but it seats like it has bucket seats. It's fantastic. It's great. <laughs> uh, how many drivers do you have? We have about 75. Yeah. Actually, and they, it's ebbed and flowed. Um, we went down a, a little bit, like uh, maybe 69 drivers, and then it's gone back up again because we have we have an uh, incentive going on right now. Uh, we have a matching grant that has been offered to us. You have an incentive plan. Okay. Yeah, and it's kind of unusual because it's not something that's commonly done. This was a unique opportunity for us, and uh, the Anderson Foundation uh, challenged us to get 25 new drivers and give us credit towards our challenge grant, uh, matching grant, uh, for $250 per new driver. Right. And that's credit, you know, and we stack them up and then we cash them in kind of a thing. Right. But we've asked our drivers and volunteers to give it their all to give us the referrals mm -hmm. from their friends and families and neighbors because there's no better referral than a driver that's in the middle of it, feeling people's emotions, knowing what people are looking for and helping people and getting recognition right then right. to be able to call, do a call to action. And so we're there, we're getting there, we're getting there. We, we're about, we're almost halfway there with the 25, but it's constant work and people, there's a new thing that we 
it just kind of happened. Mm -hmm. We had a driver sign on with us that had it. and enjoy the company of other people for brief periods of time nice. that were monitored and since then we have about four different drivers that do that their, their partner has dementia or Alzheimer's um, in I would say earlier stages yeah and it's just a great way for them to be able to interact with the community and stay active and and have some what am I thinking of Someone to there to look after them. Right. Somebody, and it's, uh, somebody to care about. Someone who's connecting with it. That's the whole right. thing about this as well. Right. What does Penny McBride do? What do you? What is? What is your role? Penny's new You're and in? she's exciting. Oh yeah. <laughs> yes, us. she is. Why did you get involved? What, and what do you do? I'm a volunteer driver, okay. and so I retired at the end of 23, and have always been a volunteer and was looking for opportunities in Kerrville, and found Kerr Connect online actually, yeah. and um, decided that that was a good fit for me and have loved it. I, I, I knew I'd like it. I didn't expect to love it as much as I do. Why and do you love it? What, what's, what's the love, of, love of, about it? What, tell us about that, what that looks like. You meet really interesting people. Yeah. And um, aside from just being able to help someone in a, in a certain way, um, I've met a woman who ran the uh, New yeah. York, the entire Manhattan blood bank. Right. I've, yeah. I've met a person <laughs> Did who- Did you need to do? Um, <laughs> A person who's a very interesting story. You know, traveled all over the world as a professional folk musician. Yeah. People oh, wow. who, you know, so these stories that you hear are very, um, very encouraging, and they kind of feed my spirit. But then, the number of people. Just the other day, I got a text from someone who I'd given a, a ride to, and she texted me that afternoon and said, "I just wanted to say thank you. Mm. You you've made it possible for yeah. me to stay independent." Right. And. And, you know, locations that may work best for you where you live. And Albert's a great example. I've talked to Georgiana about this. We're really hoping, too, that employers will allow employees to do this because, mm -hmm. you know, one of the greatest ways that you can retain workers, my, my background's in a chamber of commerce, so yeah. one of the best ways you can retain workers is to let them do things that feed their passions and interests. Yeah. And, you know, you can do a ride in as little as 30 minutes. That's mm -hmm. something that any employer can really make work for right. an employee. So we're hoping that uh, we can also kind of grow into that space, that companies will see it as an employee and Enrichment and a community give back that's pretty easy to do with very little hard cost and 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 virtually no impact on productivity. Uh, you 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 now you don't allow like grouchy old people, right? You, they don't. They're not allowed in this program. I'm sorry, I didn't. Grouchy hear. old people are not allowed <laughs> in this program. Well, you know, we all have our fair share of friends. I'm just saying, <laughs> I there's people in this town sometimes who are like, I saw one the other day at. Uh, Harbor Freight, which is one of the great buy, uh, shopping experiences in America, <laughs> and this guy was so grouchy. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna carry it out myself. I don't need a bag. I don't need you to do. It. Like, oh man. Wow. But but, <laughs> and he was a man of a certain age, you know. Like he might he might need a Kirk Connect drive, at some point in his life. Sure. But we should leave him on the side of the road because he was probably gonna be grumpy. But a lot of these folks though, they're not. They're happy. They're happy to engage with you guys, right? Is that how how would you how would you describe that? I think that for the most part, they are really really happy, and it's um, in in so many ways. What I've learned about the program is it's serving a need that's not being met otherwise, for the right. most part. And you may be the only person they. need and um, there there is a, just in case you're wondering there is a expected behavior a writer code of conduct mm -hmm. that we do when people sign up for memberships to be a part of Kirk Connect they receive this along with their membership package and we talk through it just so that it's common courtesy and realizing that they don't give money or can't tip our drivers because that's not that's not cool right they don't carry money with them and that that is the whole point of 
diverting that behavior, but also we make a rule to put in there that they cannot talk about politics or religion. <laughs> All right, yeah. <laughs> don't even go there. Don't even go there. <laughs> don't even do it. Don't even. Don't I think even... everybody just diverts that. Right. But right now, I'm sure. I don't know if you've been, you know, approached or had anybody say anything, but it's definitely awkward for a driver to get someone that's really excited about politics um, right now. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Just has to be a hot button. Uh, do you have to put in some cool tunes, Albert, when you when you drive the minivan Ooh, around? What do you, what do you, I'd like to hear what, this. What's in the playlist? Do you <laughs> have any right. re requests? Yeah, <clears throat> most definitely. It, it, I do try to be considerate of who I'm picking up. I do like to tune into our friends over at Jam Broadcasting. Yeah. they got three great stations. Because just remember variety. that, that, that uh, the Rolling Stones guys are in their 80s now, so it's, exactly. it's okay. Exactly, yeah. Um, you know, without, <laughs> without mentioning names of the rider, I picked up this gentleman who needed a ride to an appointment, and we started talking. He told me he's out from California, and he told me he was with a big band, but uh, he had to keep it. On the down low. Yeah, because right. if I told him, then everybody would know, and that just made me more intrigued. Are you serious? Oh, my. Yeah. Oh, yeah. wow. Um, we need to figure this out. Yeah, we have to figure that one out. <laughs> you know, it, it is what you're talking about, Penny. It's great, and we do fall in love with uh, what we get to do. Um, there are some challenges that come along with this uh, volunteer program, and my biggest I just needed to give you a quick ride to your appointment, but then you're so nice and sweet, and, well, Albert, can we stop by the uh, this other store on the way there? Yeah. And then from there, oh, I need to go by the post office. And, oh, I forgot to pay the... Before you know it, here we go, and I've been with them for two hours later. So I do have to be mindful of that, and I've, I've yeah. found my creative ways of, of not getting hooked into that because I do want to continue helping mm -hmm. these folks. Um, but sometimes, uh, well, one, Kirk Connect needs to get the credit for the places that we're driving to, right. so they need to schedule all that respectfully. Right. right. But but two, I got to be mindful of my time, my employer, and. What do they? Uh, what what is the number one destination? Appointments or the grocery store? What do, what do they? What do they go? 50, about fifty percent are all medical related. Yeah. Um, you get into about twenty five to thirty percent that is grocery, mainly, mm -hmm. and then the rest is beauty salons and volunteering there's yeah. a lot of volunteering uh, so there's some that people have jobs yeah. and they get they get a see so that we have a limitation they can only have three rides a week mm -hmm. uh, because we need to leave it open for other people to be able right. to get theirs in so they we take them three days a week to work <laughs> and back again and then yeah. they find rides for the rest uh, a lot of these um are i want to say there's such a variety because mm -hmm. we have adults that are um, living with their parents yeah. that are handicapped uh, we have you know of course people that are that have um, children that are have handicaps that kind of was a repeat but it's not in mm -hmm. my head sorry <laughs> anyhow it's just a, a large variety um, and I don't even remember where I was going with that but honestly um, I'll let Albert pick it up <laughs> friend's house right and you just drop them off and they can they have a ride to get home successfully or they have us pick them up three hours later and get them back home right um they're, they're using it for all kinds of things where do you need to go the things that people need to know if you're if you're not familiar with kirk connect you need to sign up now we do need more uh, drivers we right. need more help um so please come in and become a volunteer because right now not only will you be helping other people that need rides, you will also bring a $250 credit just for becoming mm. a volunteer. Nice. Be because of this uh, Anderson Foundation Yeah, not to mention you'll uh, take three people right. immediately off our waiting list. So. What, uh, what, what does it cost to do a ride? How much does a ride cost? Yeah, I was just about to talk about that. The, if you want to become a rider, you need to ride with us. You need to sign up now because there is a waiting list, unfortunately. But you would pay $25. Mm. 20 $20. Did it go down? No, you're just overcharging. I'm over, I've been overcharging <laughs> cash. Oh. No, it, it's twenty dollars. It. Uh, yeah. Time for come, not come it. and get me. Yeah, that's how I got that yeah. sweet minivan. Yeah, um, five dollars <laughs> at a time. No, um, twenty dollars a year to become a member. That's your annual membership fee, and then you'll pay four dollars round trip, uh, to or two dollars one way. But we do ask you to load your account with like twenty-five, thirty dollars. Yeah. That way we just deduct from your account for your ride. The steal. 
Yeah, it's, it's great. Where can great. where can you get for two dollars in Kerrville on a taxi yeah, or an Uber drive? Nowhere. And, and the other thing uh, that people need to know is that we do need more drivers, uh, and you need to schedule your appointments at least forty eight hours in advance. Oh with my! Us. You need to right. schedule our appointments about no, the, two or three weeks in advance it, at this yeah. point. The further, the better. Yes, yeah, correct. It's very hard to squeeze somebody in, and, and that's almost a, a no go. What's the? the uh, is, is, what, is there any? Oh no. No, um, we well, you can't be a child without a parent. Yeah, but we don't really have young children under the age. I could be driven around if I want Albert to drive me around for a day. I could do it. You can. Okay, we'll right. tape it. We'll, we'll tape film it. it. Let's we'll go. film it. Yes, we'll make an awesome video. We'll Actually, we we hit twenty thousand rides last week. What was your mileage though? You have you hit a have you guys hit a million miles yet? And in, in, in no, rides? we're at two hundred and seventy, two hundred and twenty-seven thousand. You're getting there. Yeah, we're there. We're getting there. You're getting there. A thousand at a time. <laughs> and Georgie, I, mean, I think one thing that's important for potential drivers to hear, too, is like I was a little nervous when I called to uh, ask about it because I thought, you know, I'm risking my car, my insurance. Right. Li you know, right. I was worried about things that you would, yeah. what if? Would, would what worry if? about. Right, right. Um, and, and learned that that's all kind of mitigated. So, yeah. I mean, as a driver, you um, a, agree to a background screen. Mm -hmm. So, you, you know, the, the writers know that there was someone who is... Uh, been vetted, but also as a driver, that took all of my fears away in that I'm covered by an insurance policy. Right. Right. I received training about what to do in mm -hmm. certain situations that, that could arise. Yeah. Because so right. there can be an really, emergency at some point, right? Yeah, I mean, and it yeah. made me feel much more comfortable yeah. taking on that responsibility right. as a volunteer. What kind of car do you have? I drive my partner's car, which is a Nissan Altima, oh. um, and I have an SUV, but most of our riders like a low car, so low he's car, nice yeah. enough to let me right. use yeah. his sedan, which uh, is easier for most of our riders nice. to get in and out of. Nice. Uh, that's the way to go. Because like Uber, Mac is like, you know, the Uber and Lyft have the uh, requirement of like, what kind of vehicle. They, we actually have an Uber driver that's in two of them that are in this town that only drive during certain hours. Yeah. Can. Right. And we had a Lyft driver, I think. I'm not sure if we have one now. But we try to, we keep up with them on a monthly basis to make sure that they're still in operation and how much they're charging and, and whatever so we can refer people. Because, of course, people are going to call us a lot and say, hey, I need a ride to in the morning at 9 a.m. Uh, can you pick me up? And then we have never heard about this person before. They right. think we're a taxi service. So it, it, just a little education, but one, one step at a time. <laughs> yeah, that's tough, too, because, uh, you know, Uber Lyft drivers are critically important mm -hmm. in a lot of communities, you know. They really um, are. And, and they don't really exist here necessarily I, is that not weird because know, this is, is like a prime area yeah. for something like that to take I know, place i know uh it was it was interesting i was on a police uh ride along and we go back to the police station this is about a year and a half two years ago now and there was a couple that had been at grape juice and they had gotten uber <laughs> and didn't know that there was no uber return driver so they they were they were oh at, they were at the hotel that was the yo there was no one pick them up, so and they were they had had a few, um, and they so they walked over to the police station. <laughs> and they <laughs> said, "Hey, we had to be a really difficult, but we've had some alcohol. Uh, our there's no Uber driver. We we went to Grape Juice. We didn't understand that was a thing, and so the cops actually did take them to the YO." As, as, as Gotta love KPD. KPD, <laughs> like <laughs> they really are yeah. great. And they, it turned out they they were both army officers. Uh, it was a couple. It, it was very interesting as, as well. well. What do we need to know about Kirk Connect? We've got uh, we're actually over. But what, what what do we what do we need to know about Kirk Connect? What's the biggest thing people can 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 do? It is it is so easy to volunteer and it is so rewarding. We try to make it as simple as possible and flexible schedules. It's training is an hour and a half. Mm -hmm. We have insurance that covers you. Location is online at Kerr Connect. That's two Ks. Yep. Dot org. We got it on the we got it on the, got it on the on the screen here for you. All right, you. Yeah. there it is. And so. it, it, this, the website is pretty comprehensive in what we do and how we do it. But please give us a call um, or hop online and leave us an email, and we will contact you right away and tell you how you can make a severe impact on somebody's life tomorrow. 
uh, a severely positive impact. Oh, sorry, severely yes. positive. Yes, absolutely. Yes, thank you for that correction. All right, the <laughs> best thing about driving for Kirk Connect, Penny McBride, is finish the sentence. What is the best thing? The people you meet the and the help you give. Okay, uh, Albert Vasquez. Have a great day, Lou. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what, what? Love about Kirk Connect, the flexibility. Yeah. I love be- the flexibility and being involved in our community. All right. And helping others. So. All right. Thank you guys. Give for someone being here. a lift. Yeah. Give them a lift. Thank you guys for being here. I appreciate it very much. Uh, we'll take a, one more little break, and next up will be the Hill Country Master Gardeners. They're going to tell us all about their stuff and things they've got going on. We'll be right back with more here on the lead.